Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And I'm sorry I've been sick this past week. You know, my throat, uh, yeah, I lost my voice for a couple days and I had to use it at work too, so it just made it worse. Um, I filmed a bunch of stuff on Sunday and Monday of last week with E3, and I think on Saturday too, and so that's what you've been seeing all week. Uh, and then luckily Monday morning I was able to get in those two Venom videos before I went to work. So I'm sorry I missed Wednesday for Venom Vlog. So today I'll try to do two episodes. Uh, the first one we're going to do is going to be about Venom number two, because I know some of you have asked me if I read it. So I finally did pick up a copy today at Golden Apple, and I read through it, and, uh, and I think we should just dive into it. I have a lot to say about it. Um, I have some concerns, definitely, um, and, but I also have some praises, especially, uh, you know, to the artwork of this book. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's first give out the digital code. Boom, right there. And I do have two more digital codes from Venomized, from our friend Venom Panhead Gaming. I will give those out um, in the next episode, so you'll see those codes there. But for this one, I wanted to give out the Venom number two code. So there you go. First person to put that code in gets it, and you can read this book for yourself. And you can let me know what you think. And if you've already read this book, you know, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And I'm sorry, it's really hot here today in LA, so I apologize if you see me like wiping my brow or something. It's just it's super hot in here. Um, all right, so Venom number Venom number two. Uh, so it starts off with this what I kind of you know hope you know the last in the last issue they did a big two-page spread and I hated it. It was a waste of black ink in my opinion. Something like this is fine if you'd want to do it on one page. I like when visuals are included. Uh, but uh, I can tell we're you know we're not going to get that. They're going to go this lazy approach, which is fine. At least it's one page and not two pages. Um, but then we pick up pretty much right where the last one left off. The big demon dragon symbiote god thing flew off into the you know sky above New York. And then over here, you know, we have Eddie Brock in an at, or in the like underground tunnel with the hole in his chest, and the symbiote is trying to put him together. And then uh, while the symbiote's putting him together you get kind of a, a backstory or look into Eddie Brock. Who is Eddie Brock is basically the question they ask at the beginning of this. And so the suit, as it's repairing him and repairing his heart and the hole in his chest and everything, it's, uh, it's also learning about him, more about him, going into his mind, going into it more. And then you see also it transitions into the guy, the character Rex, who's also at the same time learning about Eddie Brock um, and doing like a background check on him and stuff. So it's, it's kind of mixing the two, but, uh, but really you're getting, this is essentially for new readers, people who, you know, kind of on a surface level know who Eddie Brock is and anyone who may be new to the character, you know, getting their first exposure to sinking their teeth into him. Um, but honestly, a lot of this was, was, I don't know. I don't, I don't like any of this. I mean, I, I guess a new reader will have a different interpretation of it and they'll probably appreciate it. But I thought this was a, a, a insane oversimplification of the storyline of Venom, even to the point where they're so vague about stuff that you could easily, you know, tie it into the upcoming movie, uh, which I didn't like that at all. I, I, I like when people stick to their guns, stick to the comic continuity. And speaking of continuity, this one retcons something right out of the gate. Uh, it's, it talks about, uh, you know, Eddie Brock's mom. It says, you know, mother died in childbirth. Catholic as hell. I understand, you know, I've said things like that before. It's an older generation way of talking. Um, so, and that makes sense for Rex. He's an older guy. He went to Vietnam, obviously. Uh, but the Catholic as hell line, the line after that, though, is what really, because I was like, oh, mother died at childbirth. Okay, that's true. That's how Eddie Brock, you know, he, that's his you know, first tragedy in his life is that he grew up without his mother. Uh, Catholic as hell. I, yeah, I guess that's a part of his life, too, uh, obviously. Uh, but then it says only child. And so right away, his sister Mary is retconned. So Eddie Brock no longer has a sister. And normally that stuff wouldn't bother me too much because I would say, oh, maybe a writer doesn't know. Um, you know, maybe the editor didn't catch it, which in both cases, clearly true. The editor on this, uh, I don't know why they didn't um, jump in and say like, hey, you know, what's you know, why didn't you put this? This is Devin Lewis. Devin Lewis. This is the guy who I've been praising for the, the previous stuff that I like, the Scarlet Spider book, the Spider-Gwen stuff. He's an uh, editor on all three books. Um, so I don't know how he didn't catch this. Uh, or if they did catch it, and maybe, you know, for whatever reason, Donnie Cates says, no, it's important that Eddie Brock's sister isn't mentioned here. Maybe that's the, there's a, some reason behind it, but I don't know what that reason could be. Um, I always wonder, and it's a question I've always asked myself, uh, is what do you retcon and what don't you retcon when you come and put your stamp on a character? And what things do you, you know, I like kind of sometimes the Dan Slott approach, which is don't don't acknowledge it. Like if you don't like it, like, um, you know, Gwen Stacy hooking up with Norman Osborn. Dan Slott never referenced it once. Every time he wrote Norman Osborn in his run, he never mentioned that, you know, happening not one time. Even when he brought the Gwen clone back, he didn't have her mention it. So sometimes you just kind of walk away and go, all right, it happened in continuity, but I'm walking away. 
But this is a straight up retcon. This is saying, all right, the sister, she's not there. And before all of you, you know, Dark Origin haters come out and say, well, who cares? Because she was mentioned in Dark Origin and I hate that book and that shouldn't be considered continuity anyway. Well, she was mentioned before Dark Origin in an issue of Nova, I think issue number 16 or something that came out in 1999. And that was her first appearance and she was mentioned there. I think she was originally mentioned as a younger sister, but that obviously they realized, you know, the editor was like, oh, that doesn't make sense. She can't be a younger sister because Eddie's mom died during childbirth unless they're stepbrother and sister. So when Dark Origin came out, Zeb Wells, who read, you know, did his homework on Venom, said, all right, let's flip it and just make her an older sister. And that kind of, you know, you know, may maybe someone misspoke back then or something. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about. When Zeb Wells came on to Dark Origin and why I give that book a lot of credit where a lot of people don't is because he really did read all the stuff. And he was like, all right, let's weave these new ideas in along with the old ideas and maybe some of them will clash and some of them won't work and maybe the artist will draw Anne Wang as African-American which is you know he wasn't supposed to do but maybe he did and we fix we'll fix it later uh, but you know on Zeb Wells himself he really structured a story that tied in even to the point where the last issue ends with the fight from Amazing Spider-Man 300 on the church with Spider-Man and Venom so to me that's that's crafting past uh, continuity in with new continuity and new things you're adding to an origin really well this is, if you're just going to ignore a whole human being that could essentially add to, you know, Venom's story, Eddie Brock's story, that is not good writing in my opinion. Uh, I saw in an interview, he says, I've been reading Venom for 30 years. Again, I, that was my first red flag with Donny Cates, who I liked his Thanos run, and I liked his Damnation thing, and I was excited for him on Venom. Now I'm not so sure, because this guy is in an interview saying, I've been reading Venom for 30 years. I'm like, yeah, but you were three when Venom came out. So you couldn't have really been reading Venom for 30 years, certainly not understanding it. Um, and then even if you caught up later, which is fine, you know, I did that too. You know, I was like seven or eight when Venom came out. So I caught up later on and, and read, you know, other stories of his. So I totally get that. Uh, but if you're going to reference the story that mentioned his mom died in childbirth, also around the time his sister was mentioned in the comics in Nova and Dark Origin, why would you not include the sister. And he also says in interviews he wants to find Eddie Brock's Uncle Ben moment, which to me is because he's not Peter Parker, he doesn't have an Uncle Ben moment. So his closest thing is going to the church to kill himself. That's his moment, his passage into the new world, understanding a new thing. He has the Venom suit attached to him there and he becomes a different person. Just like when Peter Parker watched Uncle Ben die, the lesson he learned made him become a different person. This is That's Eddie Brock's Uncle Ben moment. But instead, Donny Cates wants to add this he wants to look deeper in this thing that has already been looked into and it's it's driving me nuts there's plenty of things you can add to eddie brock's story there's plenty of things you can add to the symbiotes background and that kind of stuff but everything he's adding seems like he just it's at the expense of other stories that were already told that already had writers dive into that stuff and it it's upsetting to me as a venom fan it's it, it threw me off reading the first few pages of this book i'm like all right as a long-term fan I'm already irritated by page six, uh, but a new fan might be like, all right, I kind of got who Eddie Brock is, but to me, they're getting the wrong version of Eddie Brock. They're not getting the complete story. And if you do want to find Eddie Brock's Uncle Ben moment, why would you retcon someone who could lead to that moment? His sister tormented him as a kid, said, you know, kept saying to him, you're the reason mom died. And, uh, you know, and Eddie Brock, you know, had to hear that every day of his, you know, youth. And that does something to you that scars you. Who knows, maybe his sister did something to him in his life, put him in a situation that, that changed him, ruined him, or put him in a situation to make him understand why you know, protecting an innocent person is so important. Uh, so why would you retcon somebody who could lead you to stories like that? Uh, to me, that seems very narrow. Uh, and it seems like someone who, this guy who's trying to write this you know, universe, trying to tell this big, you know, overarching story with Venom that will last two or three years, he's already starting off by cutting away some of the limbs on the tree that would help that tree grow into something awesome. Uh, so to me, I'm already like, pissed off by this book and uh, and it sucks because the artwork's really great and I kind of like the setup in the first issue but then in this one it just goes into Rex learning about Eddie and then Eddie you know shows up his heart his hole in his chest been healed and then the two of them start talking and Rex basically tells Eddie everything that happened to him in his past so obviously Rex was in Vietnam and the story tells you that in this one he's you know, going further into his backstory and uh, you know this first five issues it's it's called Rex like when the trade comes out it's called Venom Rex so he clearly you know Donny Cates is going to put a lot of emphasis on this character who to me really hasn't really added much to the story so far in two issues. Now granted that's too soon to really give the guy credit but you could tell Donny Cates is focusing a lot on this character and this issue is very heavy with uh, Rex stuff and it doesn't really do too much for me. As a, as a Venom fan it's it's 
it's not that interesting to me. Um, and you have Rex, he's in Vietnam, his men are pinned down, he decides to make a sacrifice play, runs out, gets shot a bunch, and then drops some napalm, things explode, he gets burned, and then he gets brought to like a, you know, uh, uh, I guess intensive care over, you know, like a little tent, and they're like, yeah, he, he could die, and Nick Fury comes in and says, uh, yeah, well, let's, let's, uh, put him in the program like the rebirth program part two or 2.0 or whatever and so they inject him with a symbiote a sample of a symbiote and so rex temporarily gets healed and he gets you know um superpowers by becoming part of a symbiote which symbiote that is right now we don't know it's a Apparently the same one that his other partners had and shared too. Um, and but you know, so we're gonna the, the mystery slowly evolving, and I'm totally cool with that. There's this neat page, kind of like they did in Dark Origin, where Eddie Brock got the suit for the first time. Rex gets it, and it shows him, and he's seeing like images of space and like the Clintars and this big demon creature, this big bat or whatever it is. And now that bat is loose all over New York, and people are fighting it. And there's reports that Spider-Man are fighting it, even though we don't really see. Spider-Man um, himself, uh, but we do see Miles Morales. So the book ends with Eddie looking out over the fire, cities engulfed, and the only hero apparently that showed up to fight this thing is Spider-Man, which that surprised me. I'm surprised the Avengers or anyone else hasn't showed up. They also mention that uh, William F or uh, Mayor Fisk, they say Mayor Fisk in this. Uh, so Kingpin is still the mayor of New York, even though Daredevil is now, Matt Murdock is. So this, you know, again, from an editing standpoint, I know books go to press at certain times and they, you know, things are done early. But before you send this book to printers, make sure that it is up to date. You put in there, it says, oh, it says Wilson Fisk is the mayor. Let's change it to Mayor Murdoch. Mayor Murdoch says this on the news. It's such an easy fix. You don't see a picture of the, the person. It's not like they drew Kingpin in the story or anything like that. It's just like a, a audio thing we hear on one of the TV channels and that's it. So to me, it's an easy fix. All they had to do was just change it to Murdoch. So again, that falls on the editor who uh, didn't pick up on that, didn't realize when this book was coming out. And again, I know comics are made sometimes months in advance and they go off to printers at certain times, but you always have to do those last minute checks and you call that editor over who's working on Daredevil. There used to be a time when this happened and it's weird as technology evolved and we can reach each other sooner, comic book editors don't. They don't email each other, they don't call each other. And you're like, what? what's the deal? Like, like it's You don't have to send a letter or a telegram to anyone anymore. And those comics back then were able to keep sometimes that continuity. So there's no excuse for it now. So I don't know why the editors on this book didn't call the Daredevil guys and say, hey, is Daredevil, like what? who's the mayor still in your book? And then they'll say, oh, right now it's Mayor Fisk, but in about two months from now, when your book comes out, it's going to be Matt Murdock. He's going to be the mayor. So I don't know. It's little things like that, but it's like as an editor myself and as someone who wants to write comics, like these are things I would focus on uh, on top of my story. Of course, I would want to tell the best story I could and focus on that first, but you want to get those little details right. And especially if you're an editor on a book, you want to make sure things like that line up. So you want to make sure that Mayor Fisk gets turned to, Ma to Mayor Murdoch and you want to get make sure that it doesn't say Eddie Brock's an only child, but that he's a child, he's a child with an older sister. So these are things editors need to also catch. And so this book on that level felt a little lazy to me and that's surprising because I think this team and I is good and I've praised them in the past on previous works of theirs. Uh, and I even like the setup in the first issue but this one has started to lose me a little bit and the pacing on this was it was slow but I like slow sometimes and this wasn't a bad slow to me uh, but it was just it, it could have been more there could have been more to this issue than what we got um, in my opinion uh, but it does end with a cool shot of Miles Morales like phasing into you know view because he has invisible powers and he's coming up behind Eddie to like attack Eddie which I understand you know he hates symbiotes like you know uh uh, a symbiote killed Miles Morales' mom. Even though she came back, he still remembers that. So I understand why he would want to kick, you know, Venom from behind or whatever. But at the same time, there's a giant dragon uh, creature. So I don't know why he, you know, if he does kick him, I don't know why he would. I, I would think he would want to get some answers uh, first, maybe, uh, than just attacking something that is clearly not the main threat. Uh, the giant dragon burning the city is clearly the main threat. So, uh, you know, luckily the art's amazing. And there are some things in this book that are kind of interesting. But overall, those oversights pulled me out of the book and they, and they kind of frustrated me because I've been reading about interviews with Donnie Cates. And I'll put a link to one down below that one of you guys sent me recently where he talks about how passionate he is about Venom, how excited he is. He gets to put so, you know add something to the character's universe. And he's saying all the things that I, as a Venom fan and as a comic fan, want to hear a writer say, but then he executes the exact opposite. And that is what makes me lose trust in people uh, when they do interviews and when they try to get me excited for their books. I start to revert and I, I stop getting excited because now I can't believe 
a word that they say. So I don't want to crap all over Donny Cates. He's a talented writer. He's got more talent than I do. I'm sure the guy is going to you know, turn it around. Hopefully by the end of this five issues, I'll like it. That's one of my other pet peeves. Is a lot of stories nowadays are written for trade paperback, and they're not written for single issues, so you don't feel like you get a lot when you read a single comic, uh, which is ridiculous considering they charge three, four, or you know, they charge five, sometimes six dollars for them. Uh, this is a four dollar comic. That's pretty standard nowadays, but in a lot of $4 comics, I've gotten more than I've gotten in this. And so for that reason, I'm not a big fan of it. I didn't like this issue as much as I liked the first one. Uh, but again, there's still time to turn me around, but hopefully they fix that. Hopefully they mention Mary Brock to erase a character that could possibly lead to the Uncle Ben moment of Eddie Brock is, is, uh, is ridiculous to me. And it just shows the short-sightedness of, um, of Donny Cates' run and that he probably doesn't really want to explore Venom at all. He just wants to tell like his definitive version of symbiotes and, and do the a definitive background and do all this stuff. And I don't like that. I mean, even to the point where, uh, like I said, the movie reference, it says one day Eddie Brock writes the wrong thing about the wrong guy. He gets shit canned from his paper, falls off the face of the earth. The way that's worded, he writes the wrong thing about the wrong guy. You could easily say that's Dr. Carlton Drake in the movie and not the Sin Eater. No, he didn't just write the wrong thing about the wrong guy. He pinned a serial killing on an innocent man, and uh, and the real killer got away uh, mostly until Spider-Man caught him. Uh, and so and he took credit for like outing the serial killer when he actually didn't, and he the wrong guy got arrested. So no, he didn't write the wrong thing about the wrong guy. There's more to it than that. And like I said, I understand it's an oversimplification to get new readers in, but for people who have been reading for a long time, who are most likely going to be the ones to pick this up over new readers. Um, it's not well executed. And I, I think a lot of times writers spend so much time thinking about how do I get new readers in that they don't think about the existing ones. And that's a bummer. And that's, and that's unfortunate. That's what's happening a lot in comics nowadays. And I think that's why a lot of people have pulled away from reading comics on a monthly basis. I will not, though. I'm a hardcore Venom fan. I'm going to keep reading. But these are just my opinions. Let me know what you think down below. Did you like this issue more than I did? I didn't completely hate it. Don't get me wrong. I just have a lot to vent and rant about on this one. Um, I would say, out of you know, if I was rating out of five, the first issue I gave like a four. This one I'd probably give a two and a half. Um, so yeah, it, it needs it needs to work back up to that four, in my opinion. So hopefully the next issue of Miles Morales does that. But I don't see how I'm going to get excited about Miles Morales and Venom fighting when there's a big giant dragon that needs to be taken care of. Uh, it seems unfocused to me, and it seems like the writer needs to figure out what story he really wants to tell here and zoom in on that and not just put cameos and random things in just to get him in there uh, so he can say he's a hardcore fan and read everything. Because to me, I'm starting to think like he hasn't. Uh, but again, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours down in the comments below. Thanks for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.